Okay, here's a little uh, mission to Minmus, a uh, landing, just to uh, do some contracts. I think it's just a uh, plant flag and, well, that was all actually plant flag. Well, um, and I have also packed this, I've uh, built a new lander, looks like this, and this is supposed to be a reusable single stage lander to uh, that should be docked at the uh, uh, orbiting station that I've got around Minmus so we're actually heading for the, that one dock we're gonna dock everything there as we'll be returning with a lander up there after the landing also I've uh, packed the lander with some uh, cool new experiments uh, which were uh, part of the expansion the breaking ground expansion so there are a few new things I'm going to try out, some of those ground experiments available now. So let's check the uh, uh, map here. We're aligned, got the inclination correct for the uh, upcoming rendezvous. So let's just go with a good old Mac Jeb here and uh, let it do the work. Um, let's see, on, uh, okay, it's up there. So let's do that. I've also learned, you know, that using RCS not too good when doing rendezvous uh, burns and stuff like that because obviously the the RCS uh, does alter the uh, your your current orbit every time you burn and uh, I guess with a larger vessel which needs more RCS thrust I guess it's perhaps easier I'm not sure if it's easier that to uh, that'll it'll change the orbit or if it's, it doesn't matter if the size doesn't matter but anyways no as little RCS as possible during the, uh, these uh, procedures so 0.1 second extra inclination check burn and here comes the uh, facing orbit uh, 0 0.38 up there and that's when we'll do the burn to get our orbit down at the exact time to get the uh, intersection going and when the burn is com when the uh, orbit is complete we'll be ending up at the same point in space as our target and we'll burn retrograde to get the exact same orbit so here comes the first burn 0.5 second burn There we go. Let's check our uh, separation at the closest approach. What if it's a good burn? Yep, looks like a great burn. 51 meters. <coughs> Let's see, 640.84 of the delta V at this uh, of this stage remaining. I'll use it for the final synchronization burn and then I'll ditch the well of course I have to uh, I think I'll ditch the uh, stage at that point I've got one tank uh, on board the space station and it's full of propellant so I don't I don't really have any use for this so I'll probably ditch the stage, I'll do the transposition docking and extraction of the lander and then ditch the stage. And I'll do that in the vicinity of the uh, station. So here we go, coming into the, the burn. <coughs> okay, it's just checking now, eight, about nine minutes before the burn. Sometimes it does uh, reconfigure the attitude. So here we go. Closing in, here comes the burn. Flying past. 
Here comes Burn. Look at that. Great work. And I don't wish it to get any closer at this time. I'm happy with 116 meters. I will disengage the autopilot by now. Target relative velocity is none. Actually a little, as you can see it's still closing in there a bit. <coughs> so I will turn this towards the target and ah, it's okay. So as I says I'm gonna save. <coughs> it's part of me and uh, and here we go. Keep it relatively stable now. So here we go. Decouple. First turn the RCS of the upper part there. I have realized that the the RCS placement isn't quite perfect for this uh, vehicle, but it since it does, you know, the rotation and uh, and yaw movements does alter the translation movement. Okay, decouple. RCS is on, thrusting forward. Set the target. Get the docking thing up. This is not a huge maneuver, so and the SAS is off. Let's just yaw around. And this is where it happens. If those thrusters had been placed correctly, with the center of gravity, center of mass for the unit, the whole craft, this would have been a perfect movement, and it's not really, but it's close. So, as you can see, I'm gonna have to line it up a little bit, and doing that uh, yaw motion does also push me in the translation axis a little way from the target. So we'll have to uh, fix it by slowly translating back. Getting that green uh, marker in the middle. So the orange marker is of course for that your docking node is pointed uh, at the exact uh, angle for the docking and the little yellow marker is the, tr the uh, velocity vector marker which way you're traveling relative so that's if when that's in the middle and of course the green lines are the position of the target laterally and horizontally from a from a closed system of, of these two in relation to each other. So you want the green lines middle up, fixed up in the middle, and you want the uh, orange marker in the middle so that you're on the right uh, attitude for the docking with your nose or your docking uh, node, and the velocity vector in the middle so that you're not drifting because when you move it you start to drift and that's what you do in order to catch the uh, these green lines to get them in the middle. So we're pretty close here. Looking good. Nice and easy. Good enough. There we are. RCS off. And well, we can put the little amount of monopropellant we used. We can fill it up, of course. We're all stocked up like that. And we're gonna save. Decouple. Yep, got a little movement there, and that also put us uh, moving in relation to the station, of course. So the next thing 
I'm gonna move the vessel somewhat closer closer to the station and then decouple put one guy in here and uh, another two stay in the command module and gonna dock the uh, lander first and then this part so we need to be fairly close and uh, stable so let's move towards the target using the uh, control wheels at the moment and then the RCS and as you can see uh, you don't just point at it because it's all relative motion all the time so you can't just point you have to consider the the orbiting mechanics in play of these vessels so when you get to your closest point that's when you uh, you face your uh, velocity vector and brake by uh, thrusting uh, retrograde so when we get close here we'll give it a little braking motion Also, since I've installed the breaking ground update, uh, some new interesting minerals and stuff should also be available to f explore on the surface of everybody, every body, all the bodies. So, coming up our closest approach, we're gonna break it up by now, something like this. Our relative speed down to zero. That's it. Now we can face closer. And every little motion you do, uh, it does no matter if it's RCS or control wheels, it's there are small motions starting getting you to move. Uh, of course, the reaction wheel is only internal. It will not move you in space. I, I, I think, I don't know if a huge spin on this would actually start moving in space. But of course, absolutely, without any doubt, the RCS does. Uh, any movement you do with the RCS does uh, change your position in space. The RCS thrusters are not lined up completely, as you can see, so uh, trans it will not be v perfectly effective when uh, doing the uh, transposition. So instead of moving by transpositioning when they're attached, I'll just move by changing the vector, the position, uh, the, the aim point. So another breaking burn here. Change our direction. Get in a little closer. Break it up with SAS first. Stabilize. RCS testing forward. Don't want to get too close to those solar panels. Okay. Actually, I will be moving a little further this way get out of the vicinity of the solar panels.
not too close. Okay, something like this. Okay, stable. Let's transfer the, well, doesn't matter who. Nellery. Save at this point. Undock. Change vessel. Change vessel. There we are. RCS on. Oh, and I also have to. Uh, the reaction wheels are enabled. So I think I'll dock this thing on the other side. Otherwise, I'll have to, you know, get in between here. It's a little cumbersome. So let's select this as a target and get around. Whoops. Uh, yeah. No SAS on board. <laughs> that will make this harder. Didn't think of that. So I guess it's easier to dock without SAS on the uh, command module. Have I got any pilots? Let's see who's on board here. Okay, let's check that out. Transfer crew. He's a scientist. That's just a single scientist here. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, reload this. I will not be able to dock this thing without uh, an SAS. Which is interesting because I was planning on having a scientist and a an engineer do the landing, but <coughs> without docking possibilities, with SAS dos possibilities, docking will not be possible or very hard without a pilot on board. So Valentina, you go in there. Okay, let's try it this time. SAS is on. Let's back it up a little bit. Select our port. Because killing rotation with SAS is not very easy. Okay. Okay, let's Okay, moving this way now. Checking the distance, the clearance. Clearance. Clearance, clearance. Okay. Killing velocity. Let's uh, which way are we drifting? Okay. Rotation. 
let's line it up something like that rotation correct <coughs> okay uh, RCS on a lot more responsive of course due its due to its lower mass in the middle. Okay. Now forward. If we start drifting, we break it up a little bit. Correct. Correction. Took a few times to uh, understand the, the docking um, <coughs> tool, <coughs> but uh, it's quite, quite a smart thing. Oops, a little more kick. Here we go. Ready to kill the RCS. And that's it. Docking completed. With this vessel, now comes the hard part without SAS. <sighs> of course, I could, you know, in the next time around, I could. Uh, try to um, um, you know add a little uh, automated uh, probe uh, control system which does help out with SS and such because this is not very easy. Okay, let's try this. Doesn't compensate for the... So, very easy, very slowly. Let it drift into right position. See the movement of my rotation, my attitude does affect the uh, my alignment going on as well. Just rotating. Okay, almost. Right now, struggling with the attitude, trying to get it stable. And that's reversed very hard to get your brains around. This is all backwards. Let's 
hope it gets sucked in there. Yep. Good job. Phew. <sighs> so, uh, what's in order to, you know, let's save this first of all. <coughs> now, in order to, uh, get this thing docked. I wonder if I would risk going without a pilot and try to do that with a lander. It'll be even harder because of its l uh, lower mass. It'll be very, very sensitive. Of course I could, uh, you know, Put the power, put the limit, the thrust. But I'm, I don't think so. I'll go with a pilot and an engineer. The engineer to put up all the experiments or the power tools and stuff like that. Power generation. So that's it now. Let's save this as Minmus as well. <coughs> okay. So let's transfer the crew. Now Bill is the uh, engineer, he will be landing. Okay, I'll put him in there and I'm going to transfer Nerle. So I guess, if, like I talked about before, if I add a little uh, control node, actually th the only thing I really need for docking easily is the SAS stable stability assist. That's all we need. That and uh, in together with the RCS, that's all you need for the docking. So what I think about is on the next generation lander, put a little control. There are smaller control units, even smaller than this one. And you know, place that somewhere on the lander and perhaps that will provide the SAS stability, the only thing I need. <coughs> but for this mission I don't want to uh, dabble around with the docking too much. Of course I could. I could actually do the landing. Of course the landing is also a lot easier with SAS to use with the retrograde. Now I think I'll the other option I have is put do the landing everything put the scientist and engineer no SAS assist get the landing done, go up here, but don't dock, stay like out here. Then take Mr. Pilot with SAS abilities in here, dock this thing, put the pilot in, undock, dock uh, the lander here. If we need to put the pilot, we could bring him back as we did now with without the stability assist. Oh, back and forth like that. but. Uh, since the landing itself also will perhaps need the uh, retrograde ability from the SAS, I'll do it with the pilot. And the only thing is more science if the scientist uh, is the one who places the experiments. And we don't really need science that much. It's better to have the engineer so we can use more prod more. Uh, to 
produce more uh, experiments. Okay, so the next question is where am I gonna land? Which biome has not been uh, visited? I think, let's see if I can see some place. Let's check the map. See if I have any old. I hope I put flags up. So I landed there, first step. I think that's the only manned landing I've made. And I guess that's a. I have no idea where there, that is in the dark. Gonna have to check a map. But we can transfer the crew and uh, separate our crafts here. The craft. So, monopropellant is okay. We don't need any more of that. And who are in here? We have scientists and pilots. So, scientist, you're going out. And Mr. Bill, you're going in. So that should be Bill and Valentina in the lander. Yes. Save that. Undock. Or oh, says, let's get some distance between us and the station. See, that's a normal retrograde transition, and still I get a little tumbling motion. That's also due to not centered gravity, or the RCS, in relation to this CG. But the SAS stops that tumbling motion very easily. Enable the uh, descent engine, or the main engine, some lights on here. Electric charge 100. We have these solar panels. We also have, ooh, we also have a retractable solar panel there and a big communication disk. And here's a scanner. Never used that before. Okay, so let's bring up the map. Flats, the greater flats, the lesser flats. Where are we? The lowlands. It's quite hard to make out. Okay, that's that shape. I'm trying to find the shapes. Let's do a little EVA, just check where we are. Nope. EVA. Lowlands. So that's the lowlands. Okay. idea. Trying to figure out what's what. That's north, it's gotta be. So What 
but uh, this map isn't too easy to. Well, of course, I uh, realized that using the landing guidance, pick target on map, I just <laughs> have to hover over the map to see which uh, biome it is. And we have landed on the first man landing was the Greater Flats. So that's not where we're going. So how about the Lesser Flats? Perhaps close to the Lowlands. Um, Right close to the. Of course, we need. Uh, prefer to be close to our orbital track. So here we're close. Some place there. Selected. We don't need the RCS for this. Last time I tried to use the uh, landing system, the MechJeb landing system was on Duna, my first man landing on Duna, and it didn't quite work out, so. Uh, Let's see what this does. Perhaps it was before because I hadn't realized that the, the Mark II lander had wheel, uh, uh, wheel authority, had a reaction wheels in them. So I did everything with uh, RCS. Okay, what's happening now? Okay, I'm gonna auto warp. Okay, it'll do a lap, and that will make our ground track a little bit off, I guess. Do a uh, rev. And you see, just that little nudge put us on a quite different orbital track, a little RCS nudge, due to the low gravity of Minmus. Okay, coming up for the burn. Here comes the burn. Let's check out. Okay. That was actually a burn with the RCS. Correction. The RCS. I want to keep uh, track on my money propellant, of course. Let's see what it can do here. Looks good. This looks a lot better. Okay, there we are. And I will be uh, cancelling the auto landing system when we get close. <coughs> Target difference. Don't know really why it's doing this. It doesn't really want to warp the speed. Maybe I can do it manually, yep. No. Okay, here we go. Does it incrementally? The warping is a little back and forth. Don't know really why. I 
But let's turn off the auto warp and I can do it manually. No, it will not allow me. Wonder how flat this area is. Might be a little. <coughs> It's right here, our landing side. I mean, the landing. If I do it like this, I can actually make it go pretty much twice. Double speed. Okie doke. So, <coughs> excuse me, uh, here we are, Let's see here, I want to be pretty close to that edge there. Yes, that's where it's heading. Oops. Okay, the final descent is uh, commenced. Checking my s my uh, consumables. I will abort the outer land, do it manually. <coughs> Want to be able to uh, get up the slope, I guess that's where the line of the biomes, different biomes are. It's not monumental to the mission, but it would be nice. Okay, we're pretty close now. Okay, abo are boarding the outer land. Okay, retrograde. Actually moving backwards, that's a little strange. Oops. Okay, nice and slow now. Let's just take it down. I'm at orbit speed, and that's why I'm not getting the right values. And shut down. And we have landed. Okay. Looks good. Got to tilt it forward a little bit. And systems off and we have landed. And the fuel looks good. Everything looks good.
So, let's start the EVA. Get the solar panels out, and the antenna out, the ladder out. Yep, clips down. <laughs> and open the doors. So, how about no targeting range? Hmm. I don't know how this scanner works, but what does it target? What's a target? Anyway, that's not a main problem right now. Let's have Valentina get out. Okay, Valentina, you're on Minmus. Welcome. Have an AVA report. Keep that. Grab a surface sample. Keep that. Look at the sights. Let's take a picture. Yay! Okay, switch to Mr. Uh, okay, observe Mr. Goo. Keep that. Seismic. On the other side, gravity. Keep that. Temperature. And this thing. Resource analysis. Okay, we got some stuff here. Okay, uh, let's have Bill go EVA. And he is the specialist. He will do all the grabbing of stuff. Could he transmit that? No. Okay, let's grab some stuff here. This panel shall be deployed. Minimus base. So let's deploy that one. Um, how do I deploy it? No, don't give it to her. Oh, there's a little icon for it there. Okay. Place the part. There we are. This thing is active. Whoops, activating. Look at that. Well, the sun's over there, but no, that's okay. Yeah, now it's finding the sun. Okay, so you can actually bring it back. That's interesting. But I guess you can also leave experiments on the surface for long time uh, science if you have a transmitter as well. And we do. And here's the control station. Let's grab that. Let's have Bill put that down too. Right here. And I guess that means that it has power. He's pushing the buttons there.
com signal one power available three thanks to uh, Bill as the engineer placing it okay let's grab this last experiment from this side the communitron let's place that Also, in the meantime, I'm looking around, trying to see if there are any, you know, special uh, surface things. I can't see anything that really looks special at the moment. Okay. Okay, something like this. Whoops. Okay, JL. Place it there. <laughs> Pretty cool stuff going on here. Can I interact with this one? Oh. Okay. It's powered. That's good. Okay, so let's go back to the back side of the ship and bring the final experiments. I think I actually had two of those control units. I don't really know, since I don't know really how these things work, but uh, let's see. So the ionographer, ionographer, and the passive seismometer. And I think there's a radius within a certain radius you have to place these things within the control and power units. So let's place this here. this experiment opening up powered connected and this just gives you science for how long I have no idea so I've got another photovoltaic panel I don't need that I'll just They've got all the power that I've got the power that I need. Okay, let's plan plan this final thing. Something is happening. it. <laughs> but that's unpowered. Is it just because it's too far away from the other things? I don't think so. I think it's just... Okay, power units produced. So it gives powers, power to three. Let's Let's re replace this here and get another the second power unit. That's a good thing I brought it then. Okay. I wonder if I need I would need another control station. I've got two experiments connected. One, two. 
I guess it can have three connected. And of course the control station itself is a power unit, so if an engineer places the thing, one, th one of those power, these p solar power units can, can power three things. And in this case it's the control unit and the two experiments. So here I need and the control unit can handle three I guess I'm not really sure but let's see so now let's place this one let's see if this is powered when this one is starting let's see if this gets powered yep So that's it. So that's our power, our experiments are deployed. And I would like to find some kind of mineral or crystal. Oh, look, there it is. There's something. I can switch to Valentina. And of course we need to plant a flag as well. Okay, let's go for a little RCS ride. Don't need a lot. Jeez. Don't need a lot on this Minmus. I wonder if the scanner actually needs to be on a mineral like this. The scanner which is mounted underneath. I mean it's kind of hard to land very close to a mineral so I guess it's supposed to be mounted on a rover. And that's the way it's meant to be but let's see. Usually, it can s yeah climb. That's it. See now standing on this rock. And that's when you can do stuff with it, like pick it up, <laughs> doing some posing there. So pick up the green sandstone. Hundred and fifty. If we put this in the lab, it'll be great. So, carbon scientists are curious about how Minmus managed to have salt flats despite its low gravity and lack of atmosphere. These old rocks provide numerous clues. Also, they kind of look like sprinkles, right? Return to this to have it analyzed and gain all information about it. Cool. RCS back on. not land in the experiments. Okay, the experiments are going good here, so let's put up the flag and call it a day. Why do I get the wrong flags with me? I have to change that for every vessel to my custom 
beautiful custom flag. Come first, hop distance 46.5 mega, mega meters. I wonder how long it will take before they actually start. There we got point. <laughs> That's yeah per hour, so it's okay. Science rate five percent. So there's probably a way to get the science rate up. And that would have been by having it uh, placed by a scientist. So on the next lander, if I get automated SAS capabilities, so I can bring a scientist and a. Uh, engineer. The engineer places the power and control units and the scientist places all the science stuff. Okay. Time to get back get back in. Alright, let's see. Okay, I'm gonna save this at this time. Okay, uh, <clears throat> I left the computer for a while here, uh, running, and uh, it's getting dark on Minmus, so let's pack it up. Uh, the last <coughs> thing I'm gonna try is uh, I'm going to fly over here with the RCS and see if I cross the biome. So checking up here. If I cross the border. Still lesser flats, there's something glimmering out there. Yep, no, <laughs> in space low, jeez. Gonna go up to the glimmering spot there, research that. Yep, hit the lowlands, that's good, new biome. Let's have an EV report. Oops, now we don't want to crash down with a too much forward velocity. Okay, there's a mineral of sorts. So let, I'm gonna overwrite the EVA, the current EVA by Bill and have Valentina do the uh, EVA report from the first biome. So you're just, Bill here is just gonna Take another EVA report, sa surface sample, and do the uh, chopping. So, surface sample. Okay, 37, that's not huge. Okay, we already have the lowlands. Oh, that's not as Good then, but we'll take retake the EVA report with Valentina from the other biome. So a little higher up here, higher ground. Let's get this piece. Oh, 
Oops. No. Get back up. <clears throat> okay. Pick up green sandstone. Let's see what that says. Green sandstone from analysis from Minmus surface. All evidence points towards Minmus once having several liquid oceans. Physics indicates this is impossible. Study of these strange small stones will provide valuable insight into this mystery. 150 science. That's good. So let's uh, head on down to the uh, the base and uh, head back up into orbit. Our mission is done, completed. Okay. Great job. Okay. So we'll switch to Valentina. Let her do the uh, EBA report again. That's better. Forty and. Surface sample. She already has one. Okay, we're going to leave the experiments on the surface. Head back up. She's on board. Let's close this thing up. Switch to Mr. Bill. He's done as well. Climb back up, board this thing. Um, which now what? Is it that he cannot? Store experiments. Oh, we already have the green sandstone. Okay. Well, we have to dump that then, I guess. Or, let's see. Let's check review surface sample EVA surface sample green sandstone. No, that's we're gonna keep that. Everything is going into the lab, but he's gonna have to dump this. Okay, ladder is retracted, antenna is retracted. Got power, solar panel retracted, checking our current position, and we have now been spinning a while, so we're a little out of, uh, we'll be having to, f we're going to have to fix the inclination a little bit, but we'll do that, so let's just head off into the darkness, into the night. Minmus Knight. Okay, stand by for takeoff from the Minmus surface.
SAS is on. Gonna head for a prograde. Save. Three, two, one, and ignition. Checking out. Look at that climb. Eleven thousand. Let's push it a little further. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. That's good enough. And we're on our way. Our landing site. Farewell. <laughs> Let's check inside. Almost like a star field, but it actually is the uh, beautiful green stones of Minmus passing below. Can roll around. In order to see some real stars, there it is. Beautiful uh, mountain range passing below. So, five minutes uh, travel to the apoapsis. Let's uh, make a circularization. So we'll execute that, and I'll uh, leave the auto warp off for now. Just want to uh, enjoy the moment a little bit. My question remains: How do I travel back to look at the stuff in here? I want to walk around and see inside the vessel. Okay. So let's see. Google have a quick search for KSP um, free well. moving inside spare spacecraft suggestions on development. 2017 um, looks like there there are some free camera tools IBA Alpha and stuff like that. Gonna have to look into that later. Okay, two minutes, a little less than three minutes till the burn. This time, time for us to speed it up a little bit. Okay, RCS burn. Oh, it's actually the main engine, sounds like RCS. This tiny little engine, good enough, our little spark, perfectly fine, good enough for uh, Minimus operations. So that's the circularization, uh, let's set our target. The Minimus lab and station. So, uh, let's do the rendezvous planner, let's do the line planes, let's... Um, Execute that with auto warp thirty nine 
2.7 meters per second. That's our probably the strongest burn, and that's not a lot in relative standards to change the inclination. But thanks to the low gravity, uh, we were able to do it with just less than 40 meters per second. This is a change of uh, 15 degrees. Let's see, we get these updates on the science working. I guess we can always switch back to the flag to have a look at our science spot. So here comes the burn. Quick burn with a small little engine for a perfect inclination change. We got 293 meters per second delta V remaining. And that should be enough for a rendezvous. So let's save it. And make it happen. So, a uh, powerful, huge burn of 4.6 meters per second will take us into the correct orbit. And then another burn of a similar scale in order to uh, match the orbits. We actually got a wreckage Galeus shipwreck. I think that's just a, an empty wreckage. We'll have to double check that, of course. So here comes that burn. Look, three craft almost aligned here. Now the Galeus and a little different inclination. So here comes that burn. Checking the uh, separation. Perfect burn, 38 meter separation at closest position. So in 29 minutes we will reach that uh, part and uh, we will match the orbits perfectly and kill off the relative target speed of currently a whopping 28 meters per second. Switching to the external. Here we got our target. Some debris outside floating, or that's probably our stage and something else further out. So 2.5 meters. Here's the closest approach. Slowing down and burning. Plenty of water propellant left. Checked. And I am happy with that. 95 meters. Save. Let's select a port. Set as target. Let's do the docking. Oops. Here's the SAS for the uh, alignment. I r heard about this tool called the uh, the RCS planning tool or something like that. And that is perfect uh, when designing your ships for uh, in order to place the RCS perfectly for uh, around the center of ma mass for uh, to have a, a good control without any with a perfect centered around the perfect uh, center so that your yaw and rotation and everything is not affecting the other movements in the, in the translation. 
So I'm going to look at that up. So here we are closing in. And our docking port is on the other side here. But I won't change the attitude, I will stop relative, because if I change the attitude and then try to break, I'm gonna get a sort of a parabola, parabolic uh, trajectory in the movement. So, let's break it up here. Okay. Actually, this marker is a little misleading. I've always thought that you're gonna roll this to have it up. And that's some kind of logic, I guess, f uh, based on the target's uh, position or orientation, or or if it's the the docking node's orientation. Or but uh, that makes things worse. Good thing is to find a position of this which make the movement reasonable and not completely reversed. So now it's pretty logical, and that's for the um, alignment uh, indicator. The uh, oops, I'm gonna have the SAS on here. The translation is always uh, pretty easy to get the hang of. Very stable now with the SAS on here. Look at this. Chasing it right down to the middle. I don't think I've ever felt uh, such a great response. So, it's very responsive, actually. I could, yep, there we are. I could have. Uh, actually tune down the thrust the limiter okay I think I'm gonna refuel this first we're gonna transfer the crew Valentina you go back into the CSM and Mr. Bill, you go back to the CSM. Now, store data into the lab. 250, 940, 250, 940, 940. Okay, that's good. Let's see if we can level anyone up. Bill Kerman's experience is recorded. Okay. How about the experiments on board? Review data, 625. That's the OR. It's too high to record. Review data, 250. This is a question. I. I mean, okay, let's see here. 
it's full pretty much full now and I guess I guess it'll be wasted if I just put this uh, in here when it's almost full of data but let's see I've got 745 I just put in the let's see the temperature I have already put that into the lab now can I transmit this which is still in here and without losing the data stored in the lab let's see now still 7.45 so I guess it can there's another 500 why did I do that since that was I wonder if that is stored on top of the I don't really understand this Okay. Okay. Set the goo canister. It's nothing for the uh, it's nothing for the Get that back to carbon, 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 carbon. I guess. This one needs to go back. So I'll just have a little EBA with uh, Valentina and grab the stuff. Huh? 
Okay, that's enough. Head back to the uh, command module. Anyone else wants to go back to home, back home? Let's see. Well, for first, let's refuel this thing. So we can make further landings with the same lander. That's the first time I've ever done that. <coughs> Oops, not the service bay. So. Plenty of fuel in this big tank, so. I guess I could always, uh... Oops, I shouldn't click when doing the transfers. Uh, and I could always have, usually I have a little spare fuel here, I can refuel the this tank here. It's a good thing to keep in mind on these stations to bring a first tank on the first kind of module, but I did a little uh, design flaw here, I should have a docking port on the end, it does not. It has an internal docking port. It's undockable. But then I lose the tank. Kind of stupid. And so it's not. I could uh, add another little module here and expand it in this direction if I'd like. Okay, mono propellant. Do we have some mono propellant on this sh on the station? Nope. Where do we? Have? We gotta have some mono propellant. Oh, we got some science stuff here. Oh, there are the mono mono tanks. But I mean, it still has a lot. We don't need to do that at the moment. We're gonna reset. Close. Would, would like to reset the uh, goo canister, but. Uh, Maybe I'll have to... Oh! Clean experiments. We'll reset it, I think. Reset it. Yep. So who's in the uh, spacecraft? Valentina, Bill, and on board are two scientists, and they can keep working. Ten science per day. That's good. So and there's nobody inside here, I guess. Nope. There should be no one here. Nope. There should be two guys in there, and there should be two guys in there. Yep. Save it up. On dock. RCS. No! 
forgot. Should add some fuel. Set us target. We're just gonna back it straight up and redock. I don't really know how far you have to go in order to redock, but. Five meters, perhaps. Docking. It's on the really close to the panels there. Yep. So let's transfer some of that, fill this thing back up. Okay, now we can. Stabilize. Undock. Back it up. Then we say goodbye to Minimus Station this time.